Hi friends, this is Terry Squires with today's Nashville This Is Faith. I sat down with Dr. Michelle Margiotta and she shared her darkest hours and how her precious friend, you know her, Kathy Tricoli, helped mentor her and encourage her music and now she's composing with Kathy Lee Gifford, Kathy Tricoli, Nicole C. Mullen, and many more. You won't want to miss this episode. Create your love song to the Lord. He knows your heart and loves to listen to you. For the past few years, composer, arranger, and music educator, Dr. Michelle Margiotta has been orchestrating and arranging major pieces centered on biblical excerpt with Emmy and Tony Award-winning singer, songwriter, and producer, Kathy Lee Gifford. Along with composing with Kathy Lee, she also writes and travels with Dove and Grammy nominee, Kathy Tricoli, as her full-time pianist and guitarist. Today, she is bringing light to the world with her music. This is her story. This is Today's Nashville. This is Faith. Michelle, it is so good to see you again. I have so much fun when we're together. Same here, Terry. So it's this has been a new friendship evolving, and it's been so great to yeah, get to know you. I met you through you. Kathy Tricoli, and then yes. we had you do our women's event. And I, I tell you, our women were they were just blown away by yes. the worship, the songs, the fun. Yes, you we, guys, we had a lot of fun. We, so Tricoli is Italian. Margiata is Italian, and our whole, whole joke every time we would go to conferences would be, accept Jesus or we'll break your face. <laughs> I know. But that was a little too harsh, too Italian New York, so. But you are from New York. I am, So let's yes. Go, let's tell me about Born it. Born and raised in Long Island, and just, it's a huge Italian family. I was the only one that left and came to Nashville, so. How many siblings? I have three siblings, and I have 11 nieces and nephews. Where so are you in the rank? It's uh, my older sister, me, my younger sister, and my younger brother. So it's, it's the four of us, but we are a force to be reckoned with. <laughs> you know, everybody says uh, they think we're angry, but we're just loud. <laughs> we're just a loud family. But beautiful Italian family, um, really just grew up in the church, grew up with uh, in a Christian home, and I love, I love and miss them. I get to go home as much as I, I try to get to go home as much as I can. So, yeah. so you are the only one that left. So they're still there. They're all there. They're within two miles of each other, and I am seven hundred miles away. <laughs> oh, that so, must be tough. Yeah, it is. It is because I just, you know, when you feel called. God equips you, and, and God has brought me here, but, um, but I know that they have, you know, I have their support, so I'm, I, I go home as much as I can. So. Well, God is definitely using you in a powerful way. I mean, just with all your music and arranging and being with some of the people that you're, you know, composing with. Yes. And, uh, but let's talk about your faith before we get into all that. Mm-hmm. You grew up in a Christian home. I grew up in a Christian home, and I felt the presence of the Lord at a young age. And I, I knew, I just knew God was real. So I, I remember going to church, and just the music and the worship would just get to me. And my mom wanted me to have, to take piano lessons, but I was like, I don't want anything to do with music. It was boring. I remember I used to laugh because... My, my piano teacher, he was just, he was so old, he'd fall asleep in my lessons, and it was torturous. But anyway, I didn't realize I had an ear for music, but um, worship, I really connected with worship. So I would come home, and I would, I would just start to pluck out the, the melodies, 
and, and realized that I developed a heart for worship. So that's kind of where it all started is just- How old were you? Church. I was seven. I was seven years old and wanted to play. I started playing guitar and piano. And um, by the age of 12, I was leading worship in my youth group. So um, it was amazing because I would go, instead of going out on Friday nights in my teenage years, I would just want to be in my room just writing and worshiping. So it wasn't until the time, I would say in my 20s, where I struggled with my faith because um, I just... You know, growing up in a Christian home, when it, it was easy to just, you were surrounding it, surrounded in this environment, but, but when you start to hit real life's problems, then all of a sudden it's like, okay, why do I believe what I believe? And uh, why are there so many denominations? So, you know, just searching for, for truth was really a crossroad for me in my 20s. Did you struggle any during your teen years or growing up? Not in, in my era? teenage years, ironically, because usually adolescence is, is the easy, you know, that, that environment for that. But it was in my college years, um, in my 20s. Now where'd you go to school? I went to Lee University. Okay. So, and, and growing up non-denominational and coming to a Church of God school, it was like, and being in Tennessee, it was culture shock. Mm -hmm. So, but it was... Um, it was incredible because the Lord really revealed himself um, through just mentors and professors. And um, I searched, I searched for the, for the truth and, and found it. What time in your life, though, that you remember that you just thought, mm, I don't know about this? I was involved with, uh, well, I had, you know, friendships that, you know, trying to find, you find my way, friendships that um, just, came and went and you know people come along and you get hurt and I remember I was in but I was in the dating a lot and I remember being in a, a long-term relationship that I thought you know I was going to marry this person and all of a sudden you know when it ended it just I don't I just went into this deep depression. Did you end it or did you just know or did I, God tell you? Just God like kind of told me and I, I didn't want to, to end it and I just thought this is, I, there's just no other way I, I need to end this. And I remember getting into this deep depression and I realized that, you know, people and relationship, relationships can easily be just our identity of, of like what we're living for. And the Lord really challenged me. I remember being in a, a probably my darkest moment and going, Lord, I just, please take me. I mean, I wasn't suicidal, but I, I, I struggled with my faith and I struggled with my purpose. It really got to me that deep. And I remember not hearing an audible voice, but hearing God say, if you're willing to give it up, why not try it my way? Why don't, why don't you give it up my way? And I remember when my spirit and my heart said yes, that was when, that was when everything changed. And I felt like my life started I just started living and how old were you? Honestly, it was in my 30s. I was 33. I remember just turning 33 and my life just when I said yes in my spirit. So it was like growing up in a Christian home, struggling with my faith in my 20s and then in my 30s just kind of coming to this this end, this dead end, the end of me. I remember finally going, "Okay, Lord, how how do you how do you want me to do this? And my life has changed ever since. And we're going to talk about how your life has changed yes. drastically <laughs> yes. when we it's come back. It's been so amazing. Michelle, God was changing your life drastically. Mm. Do you remember that moment? Yes. That moment when I... I remember, I, not to be super dramatic, but you know, us Italians were a little bit dramatic, but I, I was having just a meltdown. I remember being in the corner of, of the bathroom, just on the floor, sobbing my eyes out and just crying out to the Lord. I didn't, again, I wasn't suicidal, but I was like, just take me. And he said, if you're willing to die, why not do it my way? And I, I knew it was the Lord because 
I was having my own tantrum. <laughs> and it was, it was like through that noise of all, just through the noise of all that I was going through, I remember just hearing him so clearly. And I stopped crying immediately. And I, in my spirit, I said, yes, I'll do it your way. And I remember at the time, I, I just started going on the road. I, I was working in, um, at Times Square Church in New York City, David Wilkerson's church. Uh, I was the assistant music director there. I knew God was transitioning me out. And uh, at the time, I grew, my, my family grew up with um, Kathy's family. We, we come from the same home church in Long Island. Oh, so you guys knew each so other So we knew each other in my 20s. Like she would come in and out. We were, uh, we were all friends of the family and we'd have dinner together a ton. And I remember I always respected Kathy, um, seeing her life, not just as an artist and her artistry, but her walk with God, you know, being one-on-one -on -one at the over, you know, dinner, just hearing her heart for God. It was, it was so real. And I had no idea, but she, she was in town doing a conference, a women's conference. And she's like, why don't you, um, why don't you try just leave worship? Because she knew I was a worship leader. And I remember that one time we just, it was a God thing because we connected. And it, this was around the same time that I was transitioning even in my faith. And, you know, a lot of stuff happening at church. And I'm like, not, not necessarily with Times Square, but I just, I felt like God was bringing me somewhere else. And after that moment, she's, she was like, let's, let's try this. Do you, my piano player is transitioning. Would you like to come on the road with me? So that turned into a career ministry slash mentorship, the start of a mentorship. And how old were yeah. you or what year I was I was this? around 32, turning 33. Yeah. So she, she just basically said, you know, I need a new piano player and saw, saw whatever in me and thought I could do it. So, but she took me under her wing and just as an, uh, an older woman, just kind of imparting and depositing. And one of the things she said is to have a, a, an excellent spirit and, and a spirit of excellence. And she would always, she calls me Moosh because my nephew can say my Aunt Michelle, he would call me Aunt Mooshy. So, <laughs> so, Moosh. so Moosh has become my, my name. And, um, but she was just like, it's about becoming. It's not about what you do. It's about who you are. And I had to really come to grips with okay, here I am saying yes to the Lord, but what does that mean? And I remember the Lord just showing me, just spend time with me, just spend time in my presence. It's nothing that you have to do or it's because I'm such a, an overachiever trying to, you know, I got my doctorate in music and, you know, I'm very driven. And it was like the Lord was doing the opposite in me going, no, 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 you just have to be still. You just have to let me do the work. And that's the power of the new covenant because we don't realize that Jesus at the cross, he's, he's done it all, that he's given us um, by the Holy Spirit, by his power, he transforms us from the inside out. And we don't, we don't need to do anything, but we just need to believe. We just need to say yes. And I remember that time, Kathy was just, she said, Moosh, it's about becoming. It's about becoming. And I would spend time in the Lord's presence. And all of a sudden, I remember in my early 30s, I'd, I'd get up every morning. And I used to resent pastors for saying, got to spend time in the Word. You just got to be in the Word. And I'm like, okay, why? And um, Kathy would say, holiness is attractive. And I, holiness and, and being, um, doing all the, the, the rules of, of the Bible seemed laborious to me. It seemed uh, just heavy, it, like, almost like a, it tethered you, but it does the opposite. And that was the first time she challenged me and she said, no, holiness is attractive. Holiness is, is what um, brings life and light and color to us. It, it, it's what brings beauty but it's the Lord's beauty, not our own beauty. And um, I just remember digging in deep and waking up one morning, I remember I started hearing music. I was sitting in his presence in silence. And I, I was like, Lord, what, 
what does your voice sound like? Because I know in Zephaniah 317, it says, he rejoices over us with singing. And I thought, what does your singing voice sound like? Did you ever think about that? Have you ever thought even God's oh, yeah. speaking voice, let alone his singing voice? Yeah. And I know in the, in the word it says that his voice sounds like mighty rushing waters. Like just, it's thunderous, right? But he also comes to us in a still small voice. And I, I'll never forget um, asking him that question, Lord, what does is, what is your voice sound like? And then I went to the piano and I just started playing and I started uh, hearing the lyrics. I can hear the melody through the noise a whispering, sounding clearer than anything. It's my Savior singing. This is where my heart belongs. Uh, listening to this freedom song, it's the voice that leads me home when my Savior's singing. And I remember just starting to work for Kathy, and I, I was visiting Nashville at the time because I still lived in New York. I brought it to her. I was so nervous because I'm like, I want to write, but I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know if I'm a writer, you know. And I remember she just started sobbing, and she's like, Moosh, can I, can I write? And with you, finish the song with you. And that was the starts of You're writing. Of just explosion of I was hearing melodies and hearing orchestration. I never So you were just doing it, you're I sitting just, down and just started playing. Just start well, I mean, I've been playing and more of a, a worship leader. But I remember when I'd be at the concerts and conferences and I'd I would be playing behind her, I would start hearing just these melodies and then I'd bring them to her and I'd, I'd go, what do you think about this? And she, she would just, yep, let's write this. You know, so we would just write and write and write and it just evolved into a form of worship that I never, I never knew existed. So when you say, it's like, where does, where does saying yes to God bring you? That was the start of it. That was the start of me coming alive and not necessarily trying to attain anything but just become and then all of a sudden God starts to deposit things that lead you to the places that he wants you to be so it was it's been a journey and what a beautiful journey yes it's, and I love how God bonds women together yeah and how he uses because it's so important we need those mentors in our lives and yes. we're going to talk more about some of the other people yes. and what you're doing when we come back. Sounds great. Michelle, after everything that you've been through, God touched your heart and gave you a life song. Will you play a little bit of it? Yes. This is, uh, it's been kind of my theme song for, um, for years. Jeff Moore wrote it, I think in the 90s. It goes, when the music fades into the past, and when my days of life are through, what will be remembered of where I've come? When all is said and done Will they say I loved my family That I was a faithful friend And that I lived to tell of Jesus' love Beautiful. Amen. So tell me where God is taking you now. You've been working with Kathy for how many years now? I've been with Kathy, sorry, I've been with Kathy for, goodness, 11 years now on the road. We're not as much on the road right now, but we're still doing uh, some conferences, some concerts and Christmas dates. 
but we're writing a ton. So And you're living in Nashville. I'm now. living in Nashville. So I felt I felt the call to come to Nashville about five years ago. And I thought the last thing that Nashville needs is another musician. <laughs> but I felt such a peace to take the plunge to come here. And uh, since I've said yes to the Lord in my 30s, and since um, I said yes to the call to come here, God has opened up opportunity. I teach at Belmont University. How, what's that like with all the kids? Oh, it's it's amazing. It's it's uh, it's interesting because I I used to you know being a student, it's it's weird being on the other side to in part. I remember teachers and professors just just changing my life and challenging me to rise up to excellence. So now I'm on that side of the fence going, come up, come up higher, right? But also having um, experienced what I've experienced with the Lord, there's, you know, anytime I get an opportunity to, to impart the spiritual part and not just the doing and be better at your craft, but be better at um, becoming. <laughs> So I teach part-time at Belmont. I teach part-time at Lipscomb. Do you have a student that you oh. that reminds them of you mm, and where that's you a were? Good question. And you know, with Kathy coming along, and is there somebody that you see? It's like, oh, you know, I just yes. take her under your wing. And yes, there is. Um, there are a couple of students, but recently there's a student that reached out and just. It's kind of beyond the music. It, they're just wanting to to dive in deeper and get to know me in the sense of asking me questions about you know just life questions, and that's been an opportunity to share. to share and to challenge in a different way. So, and that's been fun. And you've been composing. So yes, and I so since I've come to Nashville, Kathy um, Tricoli in, introduced me to Kathy Lee Gifford because we because we were we're doing this writing and we wanted to show her some stuff and Kathy hasn't seen KLG we call her KLG um in years but reached out to her and we had we had coffee with her and um she heard my orchestrations and about a week later she said what do you think about coming on and writing music for this film um this project that I'm doing called The Way so I don't know if You've seen it. I've seen it. I, but, we went to the premiere. Oh, yes. We were there. Yes. That's amazing. So Philip Keverin did The God Who Sees with uh, Nicole C. Mullen and Kathy Lee oh, Gifford. That got, oh, that song. Oh, my goodness. It, it's unbelievable. I cry. I, every time. Every time. Still even watching it now and listening it's, to it. How long is that? It's nine minutes? I think it's 11 minutes. 11 minutes. Yes. Yes. It, it, it's captivating, it's, isn't it? It's, it's so just, the heart of God. And it is. So that so Philip is brilliant, and but I've come on board, and I, well, it's done. The project is done, but that was an opportunity to start doing scoring for a film, and I never thought I'd do that. So that was an incredible opportunity, and uh, I, I'm writing a theory book, times two. I've already written one, and I'm doing another commercial theory book um, with a couple of other professors right now. Um, I'm writing with Nicole Mullen, uh, doing some arrangements for her new projects, and we're kind of we're talking about collaborating on some things. Too. And she just released, um, what is yes, it? Uh, War Room. It's called War Songs. Oh, it's War it's Songs. Psalm 91, and brilliantly, she took that one chapter and just wrote, I think, four, five, five songs that helps you memorize scripture, but also helps you dance <laughs> or worship. It's just, it's an incredible proclamation of God's word set to music. So I got to write strings for that project. And Nicole and I are talking about collaborating on scoring the book of Psalms together. So she would be speaking word for word scripture over orchestration, over piano, guitar. So I think that God is just so creative but also he's so specific to our callings because I woke up six months ago, I woke up one morning and I, I felt like God was just impressing on me to, I, I was going through a, just kind of a, some, some stuff with my health and I was in prayer and I was like, I just want to hear scripture. 
and I was looking up scripture and I couldn't find anything that was like ministering to my spirit. And I, I felt like, why don't I, why don't I do this? Just write music and have the word of God spoken over people. Cause you know, I don't know if you've ever felt like that, Terry, when you're going through a hard time and you just want, you just want the word spoken over you. So I, I, I want to do that. I want my music to bring people into the throne room of God. And, and it does. Yeah, it just does. to remind them of... Your heart is just so pure and so beautiful. Thank you. And, Thank God, you. and you know what? God is going to do amazing work through your life and through your music. And you know what? I just can't wait to see what He's going to do next for you. Oh, goodness. From New York mm. to Nashville yes. to the world. Amen. And you're reaching it. Amen. It's so beautiful. I love you. Oh, I love you too, Terry. <laughs> Thank you, you for being... You are such a surprise friend in this time. Isn't it? I, I just love how God <laughs> brings people together. Yes. Thank yes. you for sitting down with me today. Thank you for having me. This has been great. My friend, are you struggling? Are you ready to give up? Like Michelle said, give it over to the Lord. He died for your sins so that you could live. This is Today's Nashville. This is Faith. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.